Hello and welcome to program 16 in this series of tutorials and programs which focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com and I will be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or programs. So today's program is designed to demonstrate programming techniques that you could use to find potential areas of support and resistance and also potential times on a chart for a particular time scale where turning points had occurred previously on the chart, historically on the chart. And you can see an example here, we've got the, the white lines represent potential support and resistance and the, uh, the blue lines here are lines demonstrating that at these times in the past turning points had occurred uh, with the uh, the greatest frequency and uh, the way that we do this is we use the zigzag pattern to find pivots that are of particular significance so you can see the way we've got this set up here this uh, this one and this one are ignored as not being sufficiently significant based on the zigzag pattern whereas this one here at 515 is uh, is of sufficient importance now each time one of these points is confirmed we uh, we do a couple of things first of all we have an array, a 500 element time array if in this case the 515 is not currently in the array then what we would do is we would add it to the array with a significance index of zero and we'd delete the oldest element in the array if however there is already an element in the time array with a time of 515 what we would do is increment the significance index of that time and in this way we keep a record of the times where turning points had occurred most frequently in the past then based on a user input we uh, draw the top time turning points based on whatever the user input is. So in this case, I set it to five. So we should be seeing the top five time turning points on the chart based on the greatest significance index. So that's how we find the time turning points. In terms of the uh, support and resistance, potential support and resistance levels, what we do is each time a new level is found, in other words, a new turning point is found such as this one here, at uh, 515 we take this level and we compare it with levels already stored in the array in the level array this time it's a different array this is a, a, in this program a hundred element array now if there is not already a level stored at this particular point plus or minus uh, a little like uh, explain in a minute the combined value then we store the new level in the array and we delete the oldest but what we do before we do that is we go through every single level already stored in the array and we add to it and subtract from it a what, what I call a combined value, which is a user input. If this new level is within tolerance of the level already stored in the array, then we increase the significance index of the level within the array. And thereby we, uh, we find the levels with the highest significance index. So I've got this applied to a five minute E-mini and you can see some of the support and resistance levels. Now you'll notice that occasionally you'll get a little situation such as this where there are a lot of support and resistance levels, probably too many for it to be meaningful. And uh, what I'm going to do in a little supplementary video that uh, that you have access to if you decide to uh, buy this program is just go through and demonstrate how I would change the user inputs to get maybe more meaningful um, levels and turning points. So let me just go through the inputs for this particular program and uh, hopefully explain things a little, a little clearer. So time levels to show. I mentioned that uh, having created an array of time levels, what we do is we plot the, the ones with the greatest significance index. And in this case, we plot the top five level uh, level lines filter this means that we only plot the uh, horizontal support and resistance lines if their uh, significance level is greater than this number remember each time a new level um, a level is found which is within a certain value of a level already stored in the array then we increase that significance index for the line and uh, we're only showing those with a number greater than three pivot tune this determines how the 
zigzag pattern looks. And so what you would do is you would adjust this until you're seeing a zigzag pattern, which you think accurately reflects the major turning points on the chart. Combined value. Now this is the value that I mentioned that we use when we compare levels already stored in the array with new levels. In other words, we take the element in the array and we add this value to it and we subtract this value from it and we then compare the new line with this value. It just gives a little bit of tolerance and uh, hopefully creates um, uh, more meaningful results. Colors dark blue, this is the color of the vertical timelines. The uh, white, col conf, this is the color of the, uh, the confluence, the, uh, the white horizontal potential support and resistance lines. We can actually turn off the timelines and we do that here with show timelines. If that's set to false, we don't see them, obviously. Uh, maximum thickness. What this does is it increases the uh, thickness of the horizontal lines based on the significant index, but we only let it get to a certain level, which in this case is uh, two. It can be a maximum of six. And uh, maybe if I just increase that to six, and we'll just look at that in a moment, you'll see what happens. Show zigzag. That is the uh, the zigzag pattern, which uh, you'll see is plotted in a, a dark gray color here, zigzag color. Again, you can turn that off. And then turbo mode. If we set this to true, rather than going and doing this analysis throughout the whole chart, we just do it for the, uh, for the current date. So we've changed the max thickness to six. I'm going to say OK here. And let's just see um, how that affects the chart. Incidentally, got about a year's worth of data here on a five minute S&P E-mini. OK, so now you can see um, that the lines are uh, drawing thicker when they have th uh, thicker significance indexes up to a value of six. So uh, this might, for example, uh, give you a better visual uh, indication of the significance index of a particular line. Um, of course, it also makes it a little bit difficult to see the, the price action. So what I've found is that it's best just to turn that, maybe just make it even just one so that the lines are don't get any thicker than a thickness of one. And so you can see the price action a little bit more clearly. Anyway, um, that's an introduction to Program 16. If you wish to download it, you may do so at Markplex, that's M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X dot com. And again, if you're not on our email list, then please go to Markplex and sign up and I'll be happy to let you know uh, when I create new tutorials or programs. And uh, also, I'm just going to do a supplementary video and uh, you'll be able to look at that if you do decide to download the program. So thank you very much.